good afternoon friends a warm welcome to everyone uh, today's webinar is a very important topic and on behalf of uh, you know president from bcba office bearers and managing committee members we welcome you all and uh, i will now hand over the session further to mr kiran rambia the president of bcba to take this forward thank you very much good afternoon friends <clears throat> seniors and members of association managing committee members friends as the association is always trying to deliver some good guidance on different topics on different subject today we'll see uh, there will be guidance on compliances today we are facing new compliances every day is coming up from different different participants of government agencies we need to keep ourselves updated so today that will be a some guidance on pre filing stage of the bill of entry during the assessment and after the post clearance that is post clearance audit also there will be a guidance on compulsory compliances we all need to understand and at the same time we need to guide our client also about the compulsory compliances of the goods gate what will be the barrier what compulsory compliances like bis or any other agencies secondly after that the provisions of the law for data accuracy if there is some mistake in data naturally the clearance will be in problem <clears throat> and it will take time it will be delayed so there will be legal resources also there is a some guidance on legal resources during the disputes if any we need to understand some importance of pga compliances that what i said is like bis or fsi or pq or any other agencies so for all this understanding we have with us mr jotso <clears throat> adanzer the eminent custom consultant who is also speak on international trade and wco safe framework he is on the board of some multinationals as a custom consultant so we have today <coughs> mr joshua avenzer So welcome, Mr. Joshua Appenza. So now I'll request Mr. Joshua to guide us. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you. Sorry, voice clear? No light. thank you president and uh, all the office bearers all the friends who are attending this afternoon session just for a bit of clarity can i ask any of the participants zoom call and give a feedback one minute to add to the audio 
No hay problem. Okay. Once we all of you, can someone acknowledge uh, from the chat? Can you able to hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah. just. Yeah, now we are. All right, thank you. It is important. Okay. It has to be on green only. Yeah. How is it now? Check. All right. Can you check now? All right. Thank you, Jitin, for confirming this. One and all, I'm so thankful to the opportunity given to me by BCPA, the President, Chairman, Secretary, and all the office players this afternoon. It's been always a delight uh, whenever I have been called upon uh, to share some of the knowledge and uh, to interact with all of the community. Because I always uh, see, I still remember a few years back, we have named this fraternity as mighty warriors. So my heart goes without saying when there is an opportunity to speak to our own fraternity, our own mighty warriors, it is always a delight. So this afternoon, all right, I'm getting some feedback. Voice is buffering. Uh, could you please? All right, okay. If my voice is okay this afternoon, uh, thank you so much. So let's have some good energy in the room. Uh, people around here, there are some people are seated, seated over here in the BCB office. Uh, they seem to be very tired and uh, nobody's looking at my phone. Uh, nobody's looking at my face. At least I would request those ghost people cannot see me. At least you people should see me and smile. So I'll be able to talk to you all. Wonderful. So the session uh, this afternoon named us guidance. Now I asked a question to myself, who am I to guide the mighty warriors? They are the champions. They know what they need to know. And uh, there are track records available that how this fraternity has been evolving from time to time in a mighty way. But still, uh, our president requested, uh, can we have a session? Uh, a kind of a interactive session on these three buckets. How do we guide? There are many people coming into this fraternity new. There are seasoned people. It's a mix of uh, people. So it is better this afternoon that we can have some kind of a perspectives. So in order to structure my presentation to you all this evening, I will be giving a prelude on where do we stand as of today? What are the current challenges around us? And how do we handle those challenges? To support me, my uh, presentation, I have two volunteers who graciously uh, came forward and said that we will be supporting you. So the one person name is Tej Contractor, who's sitting to my left, and another person called Dr. Nero, who's sitting to my right, so I can able to see both of them and uh, ask questions and speak and uh, on behalf of you. So instead of me asking you a question, I'll be posting the question to them, but you are feel free to send your reply back in the chat box. So that's how we will be moving forward. So we have reached post COVID in a state called a maturity state. Gone are those days where we were certain about completing certain transactions and going out from customs and completing certain documentation 
peacefully sleeping. Now that peace has been taken away from us. What do I mean? Because in the name of facilitation, in the name of simplification, we have been forced with a challenge saying that you can clear, you can move out from my radar temporarily. I will still focus, I will keep my focus on you by way of different instruments. My investigation agencies are there, my audit systems are there, my DG systems are there. So which means you are not completely let go of the hook. You're still there hanging on the hook. I might even pull you at any point in time. That is the new change that we are facing as a challenge today. So the fulcrum of this change is, it is not what you have studied. It is not whether you passed a regulation or not. It is not in which location your office is situated. It is not where and who are your clients. It is one thing, the fulcrum is, however big or small, rich or poor, strong or weak, it is evolving around this one thing on data quality. Anywhere you go and stand holding your hands, being answerable, it is because of data quality. Now, whether it is a controllable environment or it is an uncontrollable environment, which we will see. So data quality plays a vital role in our submission, in even deciding our fate of our business, whether your license is going to be running up and running or it will be revoked. It is all based on data quality, declaration, nothing else, no face value, all things have gone. This is a big monster is in front of us. Now, how do we mitigate this data quality? Now, data is coming from different sources. Someone from a developed countries are sending data to us. Somebody from a developing country is sending data to us. Somebody from the least developed countries are also sending data to us. Though they are all part of trade facilitation, still the geographical location keeping a post for us always a threat. We are also, I won't use the word threat, we are continuously bombarded with one word, quick. Quick turn around. Either you do it or I will go to someone else. You know, the pressure which comes upon the customs broker is also breaking them. Now, though I understand data quality is important, but I am not able to align between the trade. One side is highly demanding for tax and cost reduction. On the other side, the department is keeping a whip in their hand and they're waiting for when will the customs broker will make a mistake and how they can reprimand you. So in between, we caught between these two trade and revenue, and always we take, a, we take a side. Either we go and support the trade or we go and support the department. And always we were in the nerve, we were in the edge. We never had the comfort feel. Why is it so? Because the dependency on customs broker is increasing day by day. Though in certain side, you may think, okay, custom brokerage, is it going to be a sustainable business? But the answer is what we see every day, the prominence, the importance of customs brokers are highly dependable for the trade as well as for revenue. Both are depending. Now, how do this broker community in Bombay Custom House agents, all of people who are present here, are you seeing this tension as a burden on you? Do you see, why don't I work in an office where I go, I finish my work, I go home. There is no strings attached to it. But in this business, always there is a tension, always there is a demand, always there are questions, always there are license challenges. Are you considering these things as a burden or are you taking this as a compliment to increase your skills, to increase your bar, to raise your bar and to fly high? That's the question which I wanted to put across before. Which category in which that we are in? Now, I would like to quote one thing on the screen. And again, I'll switch back to my uh, interaction. Just read what I'm posting on the screen. Now, this is a phrase. I'm sure all of you can uh, read it. 
maybe you can read it along with me we have much to say about this but it is hard i think let me just we have much to say about it but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of god's word all over again you need milk not solid food any one who lives on the mill being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness but solid food is for mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish from good and evil okay here the writer is addressing a matured people and they say how long you will be sustaining on basics how long you will be uh talking about a b c d as a kindergarten lessons by now you should be teaching but you are still having milk and you are you are still saying somebody is raising hands and asking yes, questions all right so that is the same question which i wanted to pose it before you this afternoon how long that do we this broker community need to understand we would like to know what are the fundamentals we would like to know what are the guidelines are we here for that reason are we here to learn something this is how you have to prepare your checklist this is how you have to check this is how you need to do it or are we in a position to teach and command respect there are always three stages in life we born we fly high born we fly high and then we die even if you take it in a grammatical sense there is a past tense there is a present tense and there is a future tense now today this afternoon we are going to dissect our discussion in three sense of three stages pre filing during the clearance and post clearance that is one what i need to do before what i will be doing now and what i will be doing later three stages so let us start with the first stage that is pre filing stage i'm sure many of you people <coughs> are from import and export community currently you have industry specific trade specific commodity specific challenges however this presentation cannot be specific it is generalized presentation so hear me how that we need to handle the pre filing stages now what is a pre filing stage if i ask my friend nirav who is sitting here or tej please tell me you being a seasoned customs broker what in your view is required in the pre pre filing stage i am asking this question on behalf of hundreds of people who is seated here okay nirav let's hear from you be loud be clear maybe background about uh, the to customer okay background about a customer is very important pre filing stage okay please uh, yeah to verify the documents before entry. verify the documents number 2 yeah page to see the product description and the classification to see the product description and classification okay and in addition to that uh, verify the uh, notifications against that that you claim all right. so okay so verify the notifications and all these things okay now trade every consultants will come back to you and they will say if you need to be a successful custom broker you, they will give you a laundry list okay or maybe if your internal process demands you may also take out a laundry list and you will say i have to do this i have to do this i have to do this i am telling you there is not going to be a day that you will come back and say that i have done what i supposed to do let us keep the focus on very practical and in a very systematic way and whatever i am saying instead of you writing down in a paper you just register in your mind which will address exactly what my friend nirav said and what my friend tej said okay so let's take it from this though in the pre filing stage the first and foremost thing is understanding my customer who am i dealing with 
it may be an mnc fortune 500 it may be a small trader a fly by night operator we have absolutely no clue but remember you are accountable to the department is it so honestly yes because the statute demands that under the regulation cblr that you are accountable customs is absolutely not bothered because they thought the mighty warriors are there they will have robust process put in and their process will take care to implement kyc now practically some of the group of people they come and say boss kyc in 2010 is okay but in 2022 do we need to actually do kyc when the gst is centralized when government can track with the mobile number when government can track with the din number can do you still think that the kyc process is something that we need to do it as long as the law says that you need to do it you can have two different say about it you have to do it now let's take the first one from tej i happened to interact with uh, your secretary one day and i asked him a question how do you get new clients and how do you ensure that they are genuine he gave a response and i was shocked i was shocked like you and i did not believe what he said then i posed a counter question to him saying that could you please prove it and he proved it in no minute i want you to see on my screen now again i'm going to show you one slide which will help you to understand see this word i got it from this gentleman what he did here whenever he get a new client he takes the pain of sending a letter to that person through the departmental side that rpad to ensure that addresses there or not because if he if the delivery is not happening it will return back so he knows that is a fake address immediately he will take action against it see i thought this is very prudent activity many people are thinking how do i go to nashik how do i go to pune how do i go to govindi how do i go to this particular place to verify today we are hanging and giving business to me i need to take it why should i leave it by asking questions but take this is it going to cost you more absolutely no just tell one of your office staff to do this exercise put up process and it happens so every time you register a bill automatically there is a verification process happening see remember when you do aeo i'm sure most of you are familiar with aeo you have a process what is the process says personal security what does personal security mean what aeo wants to know forget about all your super processes what you follow the person who is in the supply chain whether the one who is going to be recruited or the one who is already inside how do we know that those people does not have any uh, black record or a, they have a blemish a spotless record how do we know so what do they do they hire an agency and they give money to them and these people are going to their native place going to the local police station they are going to their home they are inquiring about many things they have a checklist Uh, the renowned company called kpmg they does this for recruitment purpose and they give a report what ever that you have committed everything comes into light to the hr and they decide whether you are a good a good just to recruit a person in the system today in our field customs is expecting that to happen to you and me when you are screened in that level how much more that you need to screen your customers is it a burden on you if as long as the law the, the association may be representing in different terms they may be advocating for different simplification procedures that is one side across as long as the law is there you have to follow that so which means as long as that you think it is a burden it is a burden but when you take it as it is my responsibility you will be able to enjoy this and put this process across so this is one thing which is i am giving you a proof and somebody is doing it tomorrow when customs comes to you and say who is this person you can show all these things even commissioners will believe courts will believe that you have done your job correctly okay so kyc per se i don't need to uh, discuss about what that circular talks about 2010 1 2 3 i'm sure all of you have read it and i'm sure all of you have got a understanding on those ideas all right now we'll just move to the next part of it when any foreign institutional investors wanted to come into india they look for one thing called certainty any foreign direct investment comes into india they look for certainty if that be the case if an importer comes to you and say you file it now what you will be checking in the pre filing stage what are all the areas that we need to focus 
there are two ways one on the macro view i'll give you four or five topics micro view you can develop under that okay macro view goes like this number one in the pre-filing stage i need certainty for my classification i need certainty number two for my valuation i need certainty on the goods origin i need certainty on the exemption notification which i am claiming i also need certainty on the other notification which is like for example igst notification i need certainty to that so ccr is a separate part we will come to that later so five things i had spoken if a custom broker on a pre filing stage can able to arrive us certainty on this five your job is almost done okay kyc is an administrative thing now we come into the data quality part of it now let's take first thing is on hsn globally this is known it is not something new to you it is not something new to me that is why all of you broker first take the weapon called advance ruling in your hand because advance ruling is available to address these all five aspects if you go to section 28 you will have the very clear a b c d f up to f even something which they will notify later very clearly listed there if advanced ruling is there why we should not encourage our importer or exporter in the event of an uncertainty to go and seek an advanced ruling all right okay some of the limitations are you cannot seek an advanced ruling if there are some existing litigations are happening you cannot seek in uh, advance ruling on importability or exportability. Okay, we'll, we'll address that as well in the next step. Now we will come to this five in the pre-filing stage. What is the current scenario that we follow? What is the current practice that we follow? We heard from our eminent uh, members. We send our checklist to customers and we get it approved. Okay. What it says, we send our checklist to customer and get it approved. I am triggering your mind to think in this way. What are you trying to say? In other words, boss, I don't care. He says he is doing self-assessment. He says this is a classification needs to be adopted. And I am making him to sign the checklist, accept the checklist, so that tomorrow anybody comes to me, I will shift the burden to importer. That's what the meaning of checklist. Do you know that? Now, if you have the guts, if you have the guts, and say, you give me your master master list. What are the products that you're going to import? And I will screen everything. And I will give you a feedback on that. This is perfectly right, green. This is doubtful. According to me, this is doubtful, 50-50, which requires an expert opinion. Or this is absolutely, in my view, incorrect. Do we have the guts to classify all their products? They may not give the master list. If it is existing customer, you download it and you classify it and you send it back to them saying that 80% of your clearances are absolutely no problem. But these are problematic areas. We want you to go either you go to the expert and find out or I will go because I myself an expert. Are we in a position to put us before the clients and say, we will give you our opinion and we know what we are speaking today. Or are we circumventing to the pressure? First point, I the last two, three months, for some reason, I happened to visit a couple of custom houses. And I happen to, when I stand there, I just keep talking with people uh, without telling who I am. I just say, uh, hello, sir, how are you? What are you doing? 80% of the people whom I have interacted just from Bombay, Navasheva, 80% of the people whom I have interacted absolutely vulnerable they say boss what officer says we will do what customer says we will do application of mind zero their company name is a renowned company name but the process within the company is questionable now how do we handle it so we wanted trouble free clearance we wanted smooth rms clearances we don't want bills to get interrupted i want all my bill to get facilitated but what kind of an effort that I put in to improvise my data quality? I sit in my window and I just look at, I can see a swimming pool, okay, uh, at my home. 
every day I decided, okay, tomorrow I need to go and swim. And uh, I say, okay, if not every day, at least weekly once I need to go and swim. And I see little girls, small, you know, they come very diligently, six o'clock, they come and they swim and they go. Now, I can still sit like this in my window, watch this for one year, two year, three year, and I can boast about it. Okay, I have this facility, I have this facility, I have this access. But if I don't put myself into that, it's waste of time. Now, your brokers, customs brokers, are expected to do this investment. Early morning, or in the evening, or in a group, unless you study, unless you read, I'm telling you, you can never do this. Is it hard? Boss, you don't know what's happening in our life. Transactions are just pulling out. This same custom brokers have produced me. This same custom broker, I know people who came out from a custom broker and created customs tariff. Can you believe this? Once upon a time, we thought only RK Jain can write tariff. Someone from your fraternity, someone from our fraternity had written a customs tariff book. Someone can go, I, I, I admire, I don't want to name a person. I admire a person in our fraternity from Bombay who goes to outside India. Meet the biggest exporters and importers and give him an idea. Boss, if you do in the A route, this is a total cost. Try this B route, the cost savings are going to be phenomenal. When I say phenomenal, it's extraordinary saving. He developed the concepts in such a way that he could able to make the biggest Fortune 500 company to turn back and say, is this possible? In doubt, they went and approached many big fours and many consultants. Even the consultants could not even digest these people said what they said. You know, all these people are from custom brokerage company. They could only visualize when certain concepts were introduced in India. Everyone reads the book and they just go by the book. They started interpreting the books in a very different way and started looking into the loopholes and playing with that business. It's all possible. And you and me are in that community. And we should not be wasting this time. So in the pre-filing stage, the second one goes on the valuation. Customs valuation. Now, we are not talking about the valuation, which we need to deal with during the operations, which I'll come to that. Origin. First of all, uh, a pre alert document comes into your office. Maybe owners are there in the call, or experts are there in the call, or consultants are there in the call, or maybe executives, managers. I do not know, but still I'm, I'm assuming that I'm addressing all set of people. Now, if you receive a pre alert document in your office, invoice packing list, whether it is a new customer or an existing customer, what is the first thing that you do? How much revenue that you are getting? You calculate that in your mind and then just give the document to somebody to prepare the checklist. Your first instruction is prepare the checklist. There is no second thought because I was sitting in someone's office and he did the same thing. I was observing. That person who prepares the checklist is not exposed to a lot of systems and he or she will prepare a checklist and send it to customer and neither the customer nor the one prepared the checklist are aware about the rules and regulations of customs classification. What a funny part it is. You may be the owner of the company. You may be thorough. You may be a master, but you're not involved in the transaction. It is kept dark. For example, now there is a part. Uh, I will ask my friend. Okay, I'm just sharing this in the screen. Okay, so you also contribute. Now this is open for contribution. <clears throat> we are talking about classification. Okay, we'll come to those things. Okay. Now, if I flash something on the screen like this, can you see my screen? Okay, I cannot ask you the question and because I don't see what comment that you're putting, but Tej and uh, gentlemen can see. You see in the screen, a new shipment which has come, the name of the item is electric motor. This is a chat, this is a question directly to all the people who are there in the chat box. You don't need to raise your hand. Listen to me very clearly. Listen to me. Don't be quick. And those who are seated in front of me also. Anyone can respond. Now, we are taking a live case on the pre-filing stage. Now, I have an item imported called electric motor. I have also flashed in the screen. It can be classified in two locations, 8501 and 8450. Now, question two. The virtual audience as well as the audience seated here, that is my friends, 
Please tell me where do I classify? How do I classify? Two questions I'm asking very specifically. Read my question. Where do I classify? How do I classify? Which means what you are expected to say, even if you want to speak, I can even tell uh, Dr. Nero to open the uh, mic and you can even raise your hand and speak. But give me precise answer. Let us see where do we stand today. Yeah, go ahead, please. I have not asked any very hard question. Very simple. Please go ahead. Where do we classify? Right or wrong? No problem. Nobody worries about it because they're representing. They're like an MP and MLA, sir. They represent the people. They represent the fraternity. So <laughs> you can be right or wrong. Uh, don't think that I'm putting you on spot. <laughs> All right. Let's hear it from the... 5 is okay. majority of the... Uh, participants. Okay, majority of the participants said 8501. All right, okay. Uh, and some of them are saying 8450 as well. Yeah. All right, okay. So then let's go to the next question, keeping the positive of type. Why do those majority of the participants say it's 8501? Why? Why they say that? Ask the question. Please explain why. Why do you say 8501? They will answer. They're still putting the HS table. Oh, they're still putting it. All right, relax, relax, relax. All you, my friends, relax. Okay. If you all seated in front of us, maybe one day, I'm sure our president will make a session like that. You know, I would love to see 500, 600 people sitting and we do a workshop from morning to evening only on this, how to do classification. I'd love to do that. But here, that is not the idea. It is only to give a gist of a question. Now here, I asked a question, where do we classify? How do we classify? Is there anybody in this room? I see a lot of August audience, 50 people are sitting. Anyone wants to comment? For the benefit of audience. So a lot of members are saying general rules of interpretation. Oh, very good. Somebody said general rules of interpretation. This is in terms of the section notes and chapter notes. It is in terms of section notes and chapter notes. My friend, uh, Sir Sanjeev, Gentleman Sanjeev said, Sanjeev Harale, he said section notes and chapter notes. And my friend Tej uh, representing the crowd and saying general rules of interpretation. Now, <clears throat> hear me clearly. Here you're not going to win anything. Though if I have a chocolate, I cannot give it to you. Okay. So <laughs> we are not going to uh, get the right answer. It's not the right answer or wrong answer. I have just put in one simple question for you to ponder upon. Two minutes over. So the answer goes like this. You cannot, because we are talking about that girl or a boy who receives the pre in his hand or their manager or their supervisor. Somebody is having the document in their hand. The importer is, I am I'm, I'm the importer. I have come to you and I've given you the document. Please classify. According to website Google, it is giving two classification. Where do I classify? If you are a custom broker, where will you classify is the question. Now, you cannot invoke rules for interpretation. Why? Everyone in the fraternity, I asked this question to one person who's standing in the JNPT custom house and he said that I have 35 years of experience. I handle group. I asked him that question. Immediate answer is when there is a specific that will prevail over the general. So rules for interpretation says like this. So it has to be classified there. I'm sure everybody who is seated here will also come up with that kind of an answer. If that be, the, that be the case, gentlemen, if you are a boy or a girl or a man or a woman, it is time for you to rethink your decision. It is not. Like Sanjeev said, the chapter notes, he said, Sanjeev, you said chapter notes or section notes? Section and, section and chapter notes. So we need to do another session on classification. Okay. That will be about some four or five hours. I'm sure uh, we can do something like that and see. There is, I'm going to show the section notes. Okay, please read the section notes. Section note 2, 2, 16, section 16. Okay, note 2, 2, section 16. Okay. A, all of you can see from your screen. How do we do a parts classification? What was imported as a motor and whether it is a washing machine part or to be classified as motor is a question. Now, we are the broker that if you classify wrongly or if your importer says, you classify here. And if you file it, still it is misdeclaration. In one place, there is a merit. In one place, there is a concession. Or in one place, there is an FTA benefit. In one place, there is no FTA benefit. You have absolutely no clue. Importer always prefer to classify it under zero duty. 
and we will always wanted to please our importer and quickly deface it and to get the shipment cleared asap and if we miss this part it's only one you know in a, in a thousand uh, aspects i'm just giving you one idea the rule says of course section 15 16 17 all are defined for parts i have only taken one section 15 sorry 16 now please read it a parts which are goods included in any of the heading 84 or 85 other than whatever there in the bracket because those are general parts are all in are all in all cases to be classified in their respective heading here we have a rule all my virtual audience i hope you are reading this all my friends they and contractor they and nirav i hope that you have read this now please tell me where do you classify you read rule a now please tell me where do we classify for the benefit of everyone i am flashing rule a or i'll put the entire rule over there note 2 to section 16 note 2 to section 16 where do you classify Yes, it is. Carry on. All right. It says, okay. There is a deep silence. There were a lot of uh, hands raised, but now people are perplexed. Arey, are what do I say? If I say this, then he will say uh, no. just these are rules boss these are rules mm -hmm. if you wanted to write in a four line notebook you cannot write on top line you all studied in the college and school right got college school you are read four line notebooks you know four line notebooks there are four lines in all the lines you can write you have the right to write in all the lines correct but your teacher taught you you should write only in between second line and third line if it is a capital letter it can go from the third line to the top line there are some fundamental rules even today that we are following that correct how much more in customs broker that we have that uh, uh, pride saying that i am three decades four decades but if i am not able to do it how will you serve your customer is the question we wanted to have a guideline we wanted to have a ready knocker i need to go to office i need to click 1 2 3 4 and everything should come instant that doesn't work in this business because this is knowledge business if you are not inclined to knowledge better you search for another job and go don't try to spoil your life as well as spoil the trade if you are inclined to learn if you are inclined to follow a b c d how to write a b c d stay here and read the alphabets then get into the boat it may be a harsh statement but it's reality because i am disappointed though the mighty warriors is capable of delivering much more but they are underperforming because because someone is putting a pressure on you in the name of transaction and they are not giving enough room for you to think so pre filing stage because we said the fulcrum is data quality to touch data quality the first and foremost thing is understanding in which line we need to write you can write it in gir you can use chapter notes you can use section notes you can use supplementary notes you can use any conclusive notes but the point is you need to understand how the rules are made okay let's conclude this one part a part which are goods which means i have highlighted in red color a part which means motor which are goods are you following me motor is a part if my part itself is a good let me just put it across very clearly if my part this is motor if this motor itself is a goods what do i mean if the motor itself having a nomenclature in the tariff specifically that will be classified in that respective heading meaning go back to the photo and you see electric motor where is it it can be classified as parts of washing machine also but the motor itself is a part and it is coming under 8501 which will stand in 8501 as majority of the people said 8501 is the correct classification but the principles you opted is rules for interpretation which is wrong because when there is a clarity given in section notes as to how you need to classify based on parts classification 
note two to section sixteen, you have no business to open up JAR. Have you understood? Which means you need to go by this rule. I hope you all getting it. Then comes B. Other parts. If there is a no parts classification, like we saw motor. Suppose if there are no motor, then what will we do? Then other parts which is used solely or principally of a particular kind of machine are to be classified with the machine heading. That is B. All other parts will be classified under. If it is mechanical, eighty four eighty seven. If it is electron or eighty five chapter under eighty five forty eight. So there is a principle as to how that we need to do parts classification. So this is one tip of an iceberg. If I don't understand this, how am I, how am I, boasting myself as a custom broker? Why the learned owners are not imparting this knowledge to the downline people who are in the EDA segment is a question which we need to ask. So, which means you can write down in your action plan pre-filing stage. I need to check classification, but you need to go and ask your bosses. Boss, please teach me. How to understand GIR? You need to go and ask your association. Please conduct workshop and tell me how to understand. If you are shying about it, if you are shying about it, they have many things to be mindful about it. Ministry is asking for so and so thing, so and so problem is happening, life thing. If you don't ask, they will not conduct. If you don't understand, then we are like a mockery. We are doing mockery. We will be like a hypocrite. We claim ourselves that we are decade owners. But we don't have the substance in us as to how that we need to understand. So moving back, likewise we move to valuation. Okay, now this is pre-filing. We have not come to the online side or the uh, second stage. The pre-filing, we have seen verifying the importer, master checklist, approval, master. Checklist approval requires expertise. They pay money to consultants. They give you a checklist. You are not exported to blindly follow. Okay. Three, importability. Importability. What is importability? This is not defined in advance ruling. You cannot go see somebody comes and says CBD oil. I wanted to import. Oh, what is CBD oil? I don't know. CBD oil. Okay. Let me just put it in this chapter and I will clear it. If you go, you will be finished. So you need to go back and check what is CBD oil, where it is getting extracted, from which plant it is extracted, what is the position in India. If it is a narcotics approval required, we have to go and see what this narcotics department has said. You know who will do it in the pre-filing stage. This has to be done in the pre-filing stage. If you don't do it in pre-filing stage, bill will get filed, and you know who will suffer? The second stage person will suffer. The person who is sitting in query, the person who is in the JNPT people will suffer. And your owners will have to run, and bills will move into adjudication, which we will see. Okay. So, uh, just a minute. I'll just drink a glass of water. Thank you. So, in the pre-filing stage, I am equipping myself, no doubt about it. When you have a Slightest observation. Don't hesitate to go and approach your boss. Go and approach your senior. Tell them, boss, I think something I am not able to align with this because of certain X Y Z reason. Communicate with your importer. Communicate with your importer. If you fail, if you shy to do that, probably that is where the whole problems are starting. You know what he will think, what she will think. You know that is where we should miss, not miss out. So here, I would like to ask your attention to see this 5C as a custom broker. What you see on the screen, there are five Cs that I am putting. There are five Cs that I am putting. Can you all read it together? Five Cs. Number one is competence. Number one is competence. Indra Noi, the ex global CEO for PepsiCo, she made this 5C, and she said. The strong five Cs for leadership are these five Cs. Now I am using that same analogy to apply into the custom broker side. The five Cs number one is competence. Every customs broker need to be competent in their business. Mark my word, write it down. How do you develop your competency? You go to west or you go to east. You have to develop your competency. 
if you fail to do that you write it in your book today joshua evines has said it is meaningless for me to survive in this business unless you may be you may have a fantastic academic background you may have a wealthy rich family no problem but if you are not developing your competence you are finished remember that is the first and foremost number 2 you need to have courage you need to have courage what kind of a courage you should be able to speak out you should be able to establish your knowledge base and be confident as a leader if you are an import manager or if you are an export manager never never feel shy because if you are not able to communicate you are a doomed leader okay i have given i have given many example like this okay uh, fat 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 all of you say that we are very faithful to our company we are very faithful to our country when there is a national anthem we stand and salute when we see some kind of a flag we stand and salute all that is fine you are faithful that is why you are in this business you are also available round the clock in spite of covid in spite of rain or in spite of thunder you are available in the business that is why you are a custom broker unlike others your faithfulness qualifies you your availability qualifies you but if you fail to have the teachability ability component fat if you are not able to express what you have in you you are gone you are gone why do you need that because number 1 you need to speak to your clients number 2 you need to speak to your internal office bosses number 3 you need to speak to the customs officers if you are not in a position to either write or to speak we are unfit for the business and you need to pack it up and you need to take a decision it's not joke it's not joke if you want to become a leader you have to equip okay is there a way that i have all the drives but i don't know how to do it yes there are courses available enroll yourself there are newspaper read newspapers increase your abilities you know i studied in uh, tamil tamil medium tamil medium means i came from chennai i don't know english i studied in tamil medium which means all my textbooks are in tamil i don't know how to read english you know no, i'm not saying i don't know how to read english you know that's how it is you must have studied in marathi medium that is not an excuse that is definitely not an excuse read newspaper talk to people you know once you have determination because this industry if you are in pre filing stage you should be able to read english if you are not then this is not the business for you choose some other business okay so now we are in the still pre filing stage i am taking a lot of time but there is very important so i am uh, harping on that more we are going to come to ccr okay how do i know ccr uh, some our president uh, while ago said every day customs is introducing new new requirements of course customs is a nodal body some ministry needs something to be done to regulate it may be tariff barrier it may be non tariff barrier if they put something obviously it will be reflecting on customs because they need to implement it when they implement it you need to keep an eye how do you do it read the updates what is happening ccr for example bias is required uh, recently i happened to meet a person very interesting case somebody has imported cylinder and cylinder regulation cylinder rules 2004 has a clause regula- uh, rule 32 which says when the goods lands you have to go and get a approval from customs ever since that i came into this industry in 1989 or 88 early 88 i have never experienced this kind of a query but it is there in the rule and this, my friend is also doing this kind of an import he never had this problem one officer came and said hello come here read this there is a ccr you need to get this approval he, this person was ridiculing that officer and saying are what are you talking about i am importing 20 years eh? you came yesterday and he says sorry sir this the rule says this matter went up to commissioner finally what happened adjudicated and now they are getting that approval now which means if customs is not insisting upon certain thing it doesn't mean you are done away with so in the pre filing stage you should have the ability to communicate shamelessly to your importer and exporter this is what the law says and this is what the complaints which we saw from ice gate and this is what the notifications are available with us and you know i'm i'm saying you know everyone cannot be an expert in everything wherever that you are specialized i'm sure you are being excellent in that area communicate that all right the third thing uh, communication and the fourth thing is consistency it cannot happen that you are very sincere you are very sincere in your reading you are equipping yourself for 3 months and remaining 9 months you are off the track because of some reason it cannot be 
you need to be steady, reliable, determined, and the credibility. Because see, anyone who come up in, in this our fraternity, anyone, you have seen a lot of people, you know, I can name, name at least four or five renowned people in our trade. All have come from here. None of them went to IAM. None of them went to IITs. All are mediocres. All have studied uh, in a very normal li life. And they have come up. I and mean, today they are just flying high because of consistency. You know, that you need to keep it as. If you wanted to dedicate half an hour in a day or one hour in a week, you should be consistent in investing that time. So gather a group of people, four or five people. You can't do it alone. You get bored. Then have some friends. Instead of going and talking so many other things, polit politics and so many things, this is for your life. Do it. And last, compass. Integrity. If you see the compass, compass always directs north. You keep it in any, any location, it will direct north. Now, I am going to challenge you with this statement. Okay, some of you may like it, some of you may not like it. I have absolutely no problem because I also don't want to come every year, come and speak like the same words. Either you receive it and change. Like you, I also started the life in the same boat. If there is a query, what comes in our mind? How do we manage? How do we manage the situation? We go to the same officer and say, Sir, abhi bolo kya karna padega? I want the shipment to be clear today. Why do you do that? Then there is a kind, then there is something which is undesirable coming into that scene. Why do you want to do that? Why can't you go back to your drawing room and why can't you challenge it? You see, because at a point in time in my life, because of certain conviction, I took a decision. I will not this way and that way, both way, I've stopped, which I cannot speak on the Zoom call. Maybe if you're interested, you can call me. I will explain what is it. Post that, I still had the same challenge. I still had the same cops. Now, what do I do? Earlier, it is just opening your purse and giving 50 rupees and just getting away. No cops will stop you, right? You can, without helmet, you can go. Triple C, you can go. Or no entry, you can go. Everything. But once you decide that I will fall, I will abide, then the point of the discussion changes. The course in which that you do the game changes. Now, you don't give anything in kind. He will not let you go. So now, what is the next thing? You have to open the books. The only way you will open the book when you stop, when you close the door A, you can open the door B. Let me repeat. Whoever has ear, let them hear what I'm saying. You can never dream about opening door B, knowledge door, as long as you keep the door A of other avenues open. Is this loud and clear? You, if you are a owner or if you are a small person, take this compass in your life. What you said, the 5C, competency, courage to speak, communicate, and consistency. And then comes the compass, what your personal integrity. If this be the case, your pre-filing stage, it is not only to do have follow a checklist. It is not only that you just see a certain aspects and then you send it across and you live a life, whatever you wanted to live. No, it has to do with you as well. Your personal conviction, your value system, your belief system, and your knowledge base, which will transform your pre-filing stage. I would like to stop here in the pre-filing stage and to take any questions if you have, and then to move further. All right. Uh, you can post some questions if you have. Please ask questions only relevant to that. I will take it. Anything if you ask outside, I will simply ignore and I'll move forward. Okay, no questions. So let's move forward to the second stage. We will take questions later. We'll move forward. We are already crossed one hour, another one hour more. All right. What you see on the screen, <clears throat> a simple diagram, everybody can understand. Okay. Uh, there is a flow of documents moving into ice gate from your office. Ninety percent of the bills are facilitated. Ten percent of the bills are non-facilitated, which goes in. Now, if you have not studied your undergraduation, do you think that you can handle your post-graduation? If you have not studied your elementary lessons properly, do you think that you can handle higher secondary properly? You will fail. Obviously, you will fail. That failure at the cost of importer, 
that failure is at the cost of your owner that failure is a cost of your own custom broker license itself how do you say that now bills are getting filed all right so we take complacency every day we just go and say no today we filed if you are a custom data entry operator you will say today i filed 20 bill of entries you get a great satisfaction if you are in a group or if you are in a cfs operations you all have the count okay today i cleared 100 containers 200 containers but the real test comes in here the real test is not the 90 percent we'll come to the 90 percent the 10 percent let's deal with it for a while okay now we are in the second stage the first and foremost thing is exemption i claim an exemption which i think it is right if customs denies it what is the response to that can you go and fight with customs many courts have said it is your right to apply exemptions that cannot be rejected customs officer can debate but just because you put an exemption it can never be deemed as misdeclaration take this as a thumb rule many 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 settled judgments are there exemptions according to you it is available you claim it if customs officer said you claimed incorrectly of course they will say it's a misdeclaration it is not misdeclaration we can fight for it number one we often find i or at least at least i hear i filed a bill of entry under x classification officer changed it arbitrarily <laughs> please understand can he do it page or uh, nirav what is your response to it? very interesting question can a customs officer do it don't nod your heads because other people cannot say you have to open your mouth and say yes or no 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 why why no why no ah. <laughs> why no why no he has to give a justification on why it's not in the right place because you find it hmm. effectively hmm. and if he feels it's incorrect hmm. then he has to justify why he feels it's incorrect. all right okay so sage is saying he need to give justification and you need to say what is it now let me just ask the audience gentlemen have you been able have you ever been able to get such justification from an officer when he changed it you go to him and say mr x why did you change my classification? He will say, uh, sir, Mr. Contractor, do you know this is what I said? And will he communicate in writing whether he will say anything? Then what is your uh, funda of saying this statement? Whatever says it should be implementable. Okay. Then what else we can do? Our poor people, see, you are a big man sitting here. And you are saying this is how the officer is supposed to do a job. And the officer practically is not doing that. Then what is the recourse available for my people who are sitting in JNPT and PUB and CFS and the air cargo complex and Ballad estate? What remedial measures that they can do? Can they go and fight and fight with an officer? <laughs> Please tell me, no, contribute. I wish I have some at least 100 people sitting around me. Uh, that. Somebody huh. saying that he can have a file of it. should be getting a portrait here. Yeah, I agree. The comments, what you're making it, you can file appeal, we can do all this kind of, you know, see, you are in the business, you know how to turn left, right, left, right, because you have turned so many turns in daily life. The point, what we are harping on the first point, can a customs officer change the classification on his own is the question. No. No. He, he can mention so I mean, a lot of uh, explanations uh, okay. what have come. Can, even in case where he asks the, the, the key point saying on his own mm. he cannot do it on his own he, he can he can ask or he can contest that this is a misclassification mm. and you should fall in another chapter all right okay even so do he ask I got for it. a confirmation i got it i got it yeah, okay. I think uh, I'm heating up. <laughs> I'm heating up the room. I'm heating up the room. Oh, man, it's sweaty, yeah? Vishan sir is saying, uh, who's sitting uh, next to me, he says that 17.4 uh, to be invoked and you will issue a speaking order uh, absolutely for changing the thing. And then uh, you can take the speaking order and you can uh, move ahead further for, for the records. Okay. Now, I'm putting a question to the audience. Classification, all of you are saying he cannot change arbitrarily. Now, let the mode. It's okay. It's okay. Boss, just focus here. Focus here, please. 
Now you filed a bill of entry. The value, what you have filed, customs officer usually does one thing. I have seen a value in my NADB database. It's very higher than this value. Can he change the value on his own and reassess the bill of entry? Because you are assessing the bill of entry. The bill of entry is queried. It goes into the assessment. So it becomes reassessment by the officer. Now, can he change the value on his own? Is a question. Could you please respond? Please participate, gentlemen. Sir, Iman, no, that no. you can do it. No. Dej. Everyone has said no. One person has said group practice. It's a group practice. <laughs> okay. Rule 12, he has to follow rule 12 of custom valuation rules. Very, rules. very good. Dushan Bhai is saying he has to follow rule 12. So, please understand, you filed the bill of entry. You did a self-assessment. Very good. You Your self-assessment, I'll come back to the slide later to pick up other points. We can just move further. When you file certain bill of entries, and when the customs officer is saying that I will change the value, now what kind of an options available for us? And a rejection of transaction value. Without going into details in a very simple terms, I'll give you one secret formula. Okay, secret formula. And I am telling you from tomorrow, you can spin this formula and the entire customers will be, is going to shop. From where this custom broker suddenly started getting this idea. Okay. Now, when I file, when I say, I means I am an importer. Okay. When I file a bill of entry, under which rule I am filing the value Huh? Under which rule I am filing the value? All of them are saying something. So I am just asking one by one. Uh, so you are saying uh, rule 3. Okay. So rule 3. So this gentleman is saying rule 3. Transaction value. Very good. I am filing a value in. Correct. Now officer is rejecting my value. Uh, as Dushan sir said, rejecting the value. When an officer rejects a transaction value, what will become my transaction value? Zero. How many people say zero? One, two, three, four, zero, zero, zero. Up to zero. Okay. All of them are saying zero. Now assume for, for to spice up the discussion, the officer is saying, Are 10 1 may you add this value? Some royalty, some technical fee, this has to be added. Okay. Now, once the value becomes zero, on what he will be adding? All of you said the value become, transaction value become zero. So, can a customs officer add other additions into zero? No. Yes or no? No. But it's happening. So what is the secret here? You want to know the secret? Free of course secret? Yes. Yes. I hope you are not recording. So I'll give you this. <laughs> <laughs> the officer supposed to refix the value using rule 4 to rule 8. Because unless he does that, transaction value becomes zero. So when someone dares to touch your value under rule 12, better he needs to be prepared with just unless they do it. Because if you are not aware about this, he will do as long as somebody can bow down, somebody will sit on them. Repeat. <laughs> As long as somebody will bow, the bow down, somebody, somebody will sit, sit on them. Down. Sit on them. So you bow, we do that, no? Okay, sir. What you say is correct, sir. We'll tell the importer, sir. And he will say, we will sit and ride on you. So you need to know on the stage and go and stand before, hello. You know, a very interesting thing had happened, but I, if it is a in-person session, we could have spoken the client name, location, the commissioner name. Now we're here, we cannot speak. A DRI in a particular location said to a customer that you need to add all these things. 
and uh, an attorney went and sat before the commissioner and when we asked the question the commissioner has no answer how he can reject the value without refixation commissioner has no value in a few days matter drop with his own note it has come back and matter drop it is possible it is possible today so be aware be aware okay now i am going to give you another secret okay because see in workshop i can drag but this is a very short uh, time that i have have every custom broker supposed to read one judgment on valuation which i would recommend a supreme court judgment uh, anyone have remembered this judgment call what is the judgment century metal huh? century metal versus union of india century metal century metal citation please century metal versus union man i am telling you any everyone in my view if you are interested to handle customs i'll show you some uh, you are able to see my screen wow ha <clears throat> ah, very good sir we have circulated yeah but see the point is you have circulated you enjoyed reading that but where is the implementation okay where is the implementation so today you see this simple steps which i am going to show you rule 12 dushan said and i am going to give you eight steps now after eight step i'll tell you from where i got this eight steps okay step number 1 this is during the clearance okay the proper officer can somebody read help me if he has reasonable doubt the transaction value now okay i'll just give you the secret also it's century mill it gives you this clear eight steps what a proper officer need to do you download it if you want you ask the age or somebody they'll forward the note uh, judgment to you you read this 1 2 3 very clearly very nicely they have put in okay what the proper officer should do in the event if he has a reasonable doubt step by step step by step step by step how exactly that they need to do has been explained okay now one person sitting here in the audience has said this we have circulated this we have circulated i am going to turn towards them and ask when did you circulate this a year back yes okay now one year how many of you read this and put those principles in writing and went and fought with an officer we just went along with the strike okay so it has reasoned very clearly what is reason to believe means what what is reason to doubt reason to believe a positive term reason to doubt a negative term so what is reason to believe and what is reason to doubt has been explained and i would urge you all of you to lay hands on this judgment century mills today read line by line take notes if you still have doubts reach out to triple uh, sorry bcba and then there are people who will guide you exactly what you need to do okay so in then coming back to our own graph okay so this uh, i don't have time so i couldn't harp on all this eight uh, aspects to it so i'm going back to the diagram which i have shown you okay the second one speaking order all of you are familiar with speaking order i have seen a person who ate lunch with me in navasheva i always go and speak to somebody who over sitting next to me i asked him what happened sir there is one shipment which has come docs has sent this bill saying that this classification should be like this just put a comment now 35 days over i don't get any solution i go to additional additional is writing something commissioner is saying something i am going i have been crossed up and down demerit has crossed lakhs and lakhs of rupees now i am i am in the verge of losing business i don't know what to speak to my client and i don't know how to go further and there is no end to it commissioner says you come tomorrow commissioner says puts a comment in the file and where is the remedy what am i to do now that is where you have the same century uh, century mill judgment also will talk about the provisional assessment that is your right the provisional assessment is your right so please ask for provisional assessment it is not something that is there in the book for decoration purpose invoke section 18 and very clearly you know what i what you see in this thing in case of valuation dispute the proper officer should resort to provisional assessment expedition clearance as final adjudication on merits may take time so deposit the goods in 49 and go for provisional assessment 
CBC Circular 38 of 2016 also very clearly confirms this position. Under no circumstances, authorities can direct importer to forgo its statutory right to provisional assessment under Section 18. Any instances and compulsion by the authorities that the importer should disclaim or forego the statutory right under 18 of Act would not be correct. So we know by law we have a right that I can exercise provisional assessment. You don't need to go and beg, sir, can I clear the shipment under provision? Because you're right, you put up a letter and it will be given. So now going back to your uh, stride of what we have seen, the challenges for the 10% of the people, the second one, speaking order. Now, shipment cleared, all of us knows one secret, clear it under protest, clear it under protest. Any problem, clear it under protest. Ask for a speaking order. Now, we should know, why do we clear shipments under protest? What is the significance of protest? Can anyone tell me, sir? Okay, I have two uh, people sitting around me. Okay, Tej, please tell me, what, what is the significance of protest? Dr. Nero, could you please tell me? So just to ensure that uh, at least we get the delivery of the goods out as soon as possible. Okay, at least we get the delivery of goods. My question is that you don't need to protest. What is the significance of protest? Anybody, anybody? You disagree. You disagree. Okay, anybody? Quick, quick, quick disagree, quick clearance. Anyone? You can claim in future. Huh? Sorry, sir? You can claim the benefit in future. Very right. Most significant. What is your name, sir? Kamal Shah. Mr. Kamal Shah. You have hit the bull. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, what is the reason of protest? You go and fight with officer. It is only 27 refund has a limitation. That limitation will not apply for protest. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, if you are going to file an appeal by taking a speaking order, you don't need a protest also. Anyway, you have 90 days, you go and file an appeal. Or if you are keeping quiet, let somebody file. It's an industry problem. If he files an appeal, if he goes to the court, and if, it's a, if that matter attains finality, and after 10 years, you can also go and file refund. Are, I also cleared one thing 10 years back, but you didn't file. Protest will come and help you. That's all protest. Understand? Okay, so we'll keep protest outside. It's only on that subject in terms. Now, coming back here, this speaking order is a way out for me. Every officers are giving speaking order. When you go to them, you know what they're saying? Bill of entry itself is an appealable order. Go and appeal. Now, what answer you have? Customs officer, it disagreed on an assessment. Now, what all the options are in front of you? Number one, you agree to the new assessment and pay the duty under protest and clear the shipment. Okay? Agree to the new classification proposed, whatever the duty implication. Suppose if the new classification proposed, having a CCR, like for example, BAS, then what happened? Don't. <laughs> because you are importability, adjudication, then confiscation, release. Okay. So second, second option. Boss, I don't agree to it. I'm resorting to provisional assessment. Suppose if you're an AEO, that is a bank guarantee is not required or whatever the percentage of uh, bank guarantee, whatever the, you give and you go on. Second option. Third option is live appeal possible. Court intervention possible? You have Article 2, 226, which tells you to file a writ petition. Go to the court. This officer, this is my right. He is not giving me PD. He is not accepting my, he is not giving me PH. All your natural principles of justice, if it is denied, seek court intervention. Don't feel shy about it. You know, don't think, okay, what the officer will think, nothing will happen. Or it is all specific to transaction. Array, this ball, you put a bouncer, I hit a uh, sixer. Next ball, you, be, you behave rightly, I also behave rightly. That's all. There is no vengeance here. Or an officer will take me vengeance. Nothing like that. Okay. So you should resort. You should tell your, you should educate. See, when we stand, the brokers, when we go and stand in custom house, the officers should tell you, Aye, wait up. if this transformation is not taking place in Bombay, then we are not heading anywhere. The officers should learn from you because they are deputed. They have little knowledge. We need to go and tell them, you should not be doing like this. This is how that command should come from us. Not We are not here to receive what they tell us. 
we should demonstrate our thing. You know, that's how it has to be. All right, speaking order, and then you go for an appeal. ITC binds you, so keep that in mind. You have to uh, challenge uh, before going to refund. Follow ITC. Then there is an option now, which has come in, consultative letter. Everything need not to be adjudicated. Every bill of entry need not to be adjudicated. You can ask for Section 28.2 option also, no? So, which means you can avoid showcase. Today, you are scared. All your importers are scared. You know why? My AEO status will go if it is getting adjudicated. That is one of the threats also there. You know, I, I one officer was saying, you better follow this route. Otherwise, see, your AEO will go. Now, 28.2, no adjudication, nothing. You pay 15% penalty. There ends the matter. Do you know about it? Tell your importer about it. Opt for it. No blemish records. So escalation is it an uh, option? If a CC is not responding, can we go to PC PCC? Can we go to both? Can we write? Is that a remedial method? Because when you go to court, the court is saying, "Don't come to me directly. First, go and exhaust all the options available." So one appraiser is not doing. Don't come to the court. First, escalate it step by step. So which means from day one. Learn to communicate in letters. Don't go and stand before the officer and don't go and beg. You speak, but you back it up with a letter. Yesterday, today, DC, uh, additional, joint commissioner, additional, commissioner, CC. Letters are very, very important for us to go to the court. Okay. So these are the critical decisions which the custom brokers, the mighty warriors need to make during the clearance. We don't have that luxury. 10% of the bills of entries are even today are vulnerable to these scenarios. So which means the more you are equipped, the more you have a consensus amongst your community, the more you have to have this kind of a decision-making power, the lesser the problem that you face in customs. So if you introspect, if you invoke Kappa and find out why this has happened, this could have been very well arrested had you focused on stage one. Because you were closing your eyes in stage one, you are now standing in front of stage two, where there is a financial implications also added to it. Right, moving forward. On the other hand, 90% of the people, they cleared the bill of entry. Is that something that they have the liberty to just say, okay, I am off the hook from customs? The answer is no, because you have post clearance audit, you have DRI interception, you have other investigation officers. So when it comes, you'll have to respond to it. Okay, so post clearance audit, we have done many sessions, so I don't need to repeat that here. Also, you are aware about post clearance audit. You know how today post clearance audit works? Though TBA, that is transaction based audit queries can be raised, premises based audit queries can be raised. Thematic based audit queries can be raised. Customs find finding very interesting the third option. Why do I need to go to a customer's premises and waste my time and officer's time? Why do I need to raise one one query? So always they are preferring to go with thematic basis. So the, you know how theme based audit works. The notices have been sent a group of people. How do you as a broker need to understand? Whenever you see a notice coming from audit. First thing, Office of the Commissioner of Customs, Audit Commissionerate, then there is a file number. Please watch out for one letter, okay? Is there a A1, A2, A3 is mentioned there? A, anything to start with A, which means it's transactional audit. It is only for you. Nobody else got that question. If that sec in the line, if you see B1, B2, B3, which means it is premises-based audit. It is again for you, not for anyone. Officer may come to your premises because that premises based audit team has invoked this notice. But if you see in the file note, file uh, audit C1, C2, C3, it is thematic audit, which means it is not only for you, it is for the entire segment. So you need to talk to your counterpart and get the feedback and uh, within yourself need to, meaning your importers within yourself need to understand what kind of a position that you are taking and need to move forward. Okay. Okay, so audit and investigation, maybe we will do a separate workshop on that. Uh, how to handle DRI, how to handle SIB, 
how to respond to PCA queries, what are our rights, 110, and all those things that we will see, how summons have been issued, how goods are seized, how uh, mahajas have been made, and how it is provisionally released, how notices have been issued, at what is the frequency, what is the timeline in which notice can be issued, what are the penal provision 10, 110, 11, 12, 14, 14, AA, 17 can be invoked, you know, all the things that we will see it in a workshop mode kind of a thing in detail. Okay. So what we are trying to communicate here is that 90% of the people who are cleared RMS also need to make sure that you are error free on those other aspects. All right. So we have, we have just covered almost like uh, imports, you know, to in nutshell that uh, within the time limit available. So I would like to stop here for a moment on imports. If you have any uh, questions which is related to that, uh, please post it or even you can ask if there is a facility to speak up. There is somebody who's asked a question called, what is the unlimited time for filing an appeal in case duty is paid under protest? Sir, appeal filing, you have only 60 days you have to file an appeal and 30 days condonations available. Okay. That is unchangeable. That's all. Hmm? Unless the COVID period, uh, Supreme Court Somoto came and uh, gave that verdict because of which we got that extended period. Even that is also lapsed. Now that part is also over. So now as of today, appeal is 60 plus 30 days. That's all. Okay. Next, sir. Is there uh, any time bar for provisional assessment to final assessment? If yes, under which section? Provisional assessment, uh, pending protection of test result, pending protection of anything. So whenever you give a bond, the bond is valid for a year, right? And uh, if you wanted to extend the period, normally provisional assessment, why do you do circumstances? One, uh, when you draw a sample, when you take uh, some goods, pending protection of result or pending protection of document, like this Karotar, they put the validity six months. Okay. Post that, the decision will be taken. So, or if there are matter pending in different courts and it is everlasting going, uh, it can go on. Provisional bond is an option which is available for reasons specific to that particular uh, transaction. Okay. Thoughts to ponder. Uh, we are closing import before moving to exports. Okay. Keep your mouth free from this. this is the King Solomon's uh, proverb, which I'm just trying to quote it here. Uh, keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Uh, this helps. This helps. Never try to earn your bread by telling thousand rupees is the charges that I'm paying here, and you write two thousand. This is a phenomenon of a custom broker. You will lose lose your respect. Okay, not only in front of your customers because they also know. Those days have gone. Even from a spiritual perspective, you cannot go and stand before the holy God and say that, you know, I come here like a righteous child. Because you know, to keep yourself, uh, try to keep your uh, uh, lips away from this kind of lying. Because people in this world have one thing. White lies are permitted. White lies are permitted. What is white lies? For example, if your wife calls you and says, where are you? I've just come five minutes. I'm there in the turning. You know, that's white lies. Okay. Always learn to say the yes is yes and the no is no. But this is an ingredient for custom brokers, which we lost it over the period of time. That will, you know, bring your shoulder back to stand upright and to face any challenges. Hmm? A honest witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. Because once you tell one lie, then you need to back it up with many, 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 many lies. Do not lie to each other between, between us. You know, since you have taken off your old self with, uh, with its practices. Of course, once upon a time, we were immature and we were doing all these kind of things. Now it's time that we stand on a ground that it is a pure professional ground. Our words are having high integrity. It is either 100 or 0. All right. Exports. Exportability. Okay. Now, <clears throat> one question may generally come out in people's mind. Uh, while I was talking to, though I am not a great person on exports, but still when I was talking to Parishar, what are the challenges that you face? He says, suddenly the government is coming and introducing a ban on uh, certain items, steel grades or uh, onions. Now, what do I do? Ban or impose certain duties. So how do we do? Always you remember, don't get panicked. Okay. There is a transitional provision which is available. Uh, you, if you understand this, it will help you to explain to your exporters 
also if a customs officer are not aware you can help them to uh, advise so you don't need to get panicked overnight something is coming so will i lose my ground no you will not lose your ground how does it work restriction government of india has power to impose restriction various reasons okay uh, because it's strategic reasons they have the power to do it but dgft is only a channel in which passing this information of late if you see all the dgft notification you will never see dgft signing you know because the notice was challenged by a couple of people before the court it is still pending it is ex officio of the government that's why you always say it is signed by in the file by the minister so government of india is signing it so it is always the additional secretary if you see in the notification the additional secretary is signing so nobody can question dgft dgft is only a mechanism to pass this information to the trade okay so what the uh, understanding that we need to have if there is a contract you have with exporters having a contract and there is an lc established and suddenly there is a change taken by the government you can go back to dgft and register the lc register the contract i have ordered 10000 metric tons only 2000 is over 8000 metric ton yet to come it's a contractual obligation if i miss then i will have serious penalty loss so government dgft will register and they will allow that quantity without any problem if you are not aware it is not government problem it you need to be aware and you need to exercise this okay good all right the second one okay uh, our president is saying you know uh, we will be talking about ccr okay uh, i did a seminar elsewhere on ccr almost i could able to score out 11 or 12 major topics in which we did ccr one one topic is just drawing like at least half an hour and about okay so if i take import ccr import ccr all of you are specific, you are familiar with your import ccr in my view you study if you have questions in understanding the ccr you write to the secretariat and definitely i will support with my version in how to understand it how to interpret it how to handle that okay import ccr now in export there is something which has happened very uniquely uh, recently i was talking to your dushan uh, uh, sir uh and he said he showed me one file he showed me one file and in that file he said there are 29 kitna hai bhai 29 custom brokers 29 customs brokers have been served with notices on account of scomat non compliance few years back i used to speak about the subject you know four years uh, back onwards and nobody bothered <laughs> okay it was like a story people will just listen and they'll forget about it today when they receive notices on account of scomat it is quite scary so probably this is very important and i thought it is not only to your license it has other implication uh, it would be prudent for me to give you some kind of a, a thought process around that so i thought i can just uh, share some of my insight on scomet related matters uh, just bear with me for a moment switch to that uh, scomet slides okay so uh, i'm sure all, by now all the audience it's not uh, right for me to ask a question what is comet because it's displayed over there uh, for those who are not familiar please take a note of it what is comet on the screen okay now why exports needs to be controlled there are reasons which i have put in uh, international non -prolif uh, proliferation credentials foreign policy national security and uh, domestic production of defense equipment global value chain these are the reasons for export controls okay now we will just see something very uh, up to the point okay now we know customs act foreign trade development regulation act we have certain laws what you see on the left side of the screen it is not something new to you you are familiar with the fdr now what happened a few years back this important change which took place the screen may what you see from 1 to 6 iaea biological weapon conventions chemical weapon conventions it is all existing but we became party from a particular year 1974 i have put it on the screen 
the missile technology regime hague code of contact we became party to this in 2016 these are formal conventions one special thing that we have done after mr modi come into power we had an urge to become a member of nuclear supply group so in order to tell the global stage that we have a good control on exports we tried many things and we demonstrated and we failed i can't be sharing those instances on the call we tried we tried to prove the global community that we have a sound export control system but we failed miserably in order to regain the lost trust we went and signed this australia group called chemical and biological convention uh, arrangement which is signed at a place called wasner wasner is a place name so any time when there is an agreement signed in delhi it is known as delhi agreement it is signed in bombay bombay agreement likewise wasner arrangement or wasner agreement has been signed now this to tell the world that we are serious about implementing export controls and then this changes took place on the legal framework we had only two laws customs act and foreign trade development act these are the two laws that we had now we brought in weapons and mass destruction system and also atomic energy these two acts have been brought in into the legal framework so that we can borrow the penal provisions from the act why do we say that if you are uh, interesting exporters you can just remember once we observe that somebody exporting an item which is not permissible a dual use item the global community told indian government to take action straight they invoked ftdr act anybody can tell me what is the punishment under ftdr act i am sure many of you would have faced we have customs act what are the penal provisions immediately we'll open our mouth and say from 110 onwards we'll keep counting so under ftdr act anybody from audience or anybody can say what could be the fine amount or what could be the action that they can take under ftdr my audience to my right near tej left okay not very familiar it is 10000 rupees ah 50000 rupees somebody said very good it it was 10000 rupees uh 10000 rupees and your cancellation of iec that's all so if anybody violates dual uh exports you will at the most do what cancel their license and then put 10000 rupees they will jolly well pay the 10000 they will start another company and they will keep doing the same thing right you can't stop them doing it so now they have borrowed these provisions which has stringent controls you will be imprisoned 7 years if you violate i am not joking okay four years back when i said everybody didn't believe it are when it will come we will see like you know you have to go to digital nobody moved into digital the day demonization uh, sorry <laughs> what is that demonization correct right? huh? monetization demonetization monetization monetization came in everybody switched to digital even from the 5 rupees onwards we moved in so similarly now today mr drushad mulani is raising a red flag here he is showing me a notice which says 29 custom brokers received notice have you ever heard in your lifetime custom brokers received notice for violation of scomet first of all we don't even understand what is scomet that is secondary <laughs> okay ha scomet malum hai ha malum hai what is scomet we give the abbreviation now but that that ah i seen appendix i seen okay that is different we'll come to that i am not demeaning you i'm just saying it is not required no because unless there is no enforcement the environmental law environmental law came 36 years back okay you should not uh, construct anything without getting environmental permit but it was enforced only 5 years back now mpcb going and issuing notice left and right now people are not constructing anything they are even demolishing buildings so doesn't mean laws are existing from there but the enforcement came in now similarly this enforcement has become very strict because of wasner arrangement i will tell you the cracks now okay so other instruments which i mentioned this un uh, security un scr mean un security council regulations uh, have some numbers even section 11 notifications for exports also issued under unsc i'm sure you would have seen it in your tariff book also 2250 these things are all only government can do 
completely restricted, especially People Republic of Korea, some uh, Section 11 notifications, which you can see. It, okay. Now, legal framework in the FTDR Act, section, uh, subsection 2 of Section 3, the general power to control import and exports are mentioned there. So 2.09, they have amended. Now, this is an important thing. Chapter 4A, they amended. For what reason can you see? FTDR Amendment Act 2010, borrowing the provisions of weapons and mass destruction to apply to export, number one. To apply to transfer. Now, sorry, somebody will say, boss, I imported these goods from Dubai. It came to India. It never got cleared. It only got transferred from here to another country. It applies there as well. Apply for transfer, retransfer, brought in transit and transit in goods and brokering in specified goods. So this provision, which has come in, all the people who are involved in export, please go and read this. Okay. Now, the danger, what it says, who is now having the owners? You can read it along with me. No person shall export any material, equipment, technology, knowing that such material, equipment, or technology is intended to be used. Such material, equipment, technology is intended to be used in the design or manufacture of biological weapon, chemical weapon, nuclear weapon, or other nuclear explosive in their missile delivery system. No person can export. Now, question is, we don't even read our drawback schedule. <laughs> drawback. Okay. You know, there is a simple logic. If you have an advanced authorization, you cannot have drawback unless in one particular circumstances, which I will explain, maybe if time permits. So if you are EOU, you cannot use drawback. There is a simple, but still I have seen, I am handling cases. Advanced authorization export is that drawback is also claimed because exporter said it. So we don't even open and read what is available to me serial number. Now here you have a time bomb above you. That is what Mr. Dushant got 29 notice. Now all the brokers are sending the notice. It is because of 14. Now read this other interesting thing. When our country wants to demonstrate something, they will demonstrate pakka. They could have been very mild, but here they wanted to express their intent to the global community in the following way. Number one, you know what they have done? They imported the entire appendix, which is there in Vasner arrangement, directly into the foreign trade policy, handbook of procedures. Your appendix one, because it is not driven based on HS code. Number two, they also wanted to say that we are so good. See, we brought one more clause, 2.72B. Please read it. If the exporter had been noticed, uh, notified by right in writing in DG, by DGFT, or if, if this is okay, if DGFT says this particular item you should not export, we all aware. Or if you have a reason to believe that this item is not covered under this format list, but has potential risk. So what a funny class it is, you know. Nothing is visible. My own record book, which I'm not able to read, I don't have time. My own classification, I don't have time. Now I need to have a sense. Now imagine what kind of precautionary measures that you need to take. There is an item which is used in a cosmetic industry, very common. That is exported out of India. Notice have been issued. To believe that an item is not covered as potential risk to use in diverse vehicles, you shall apply SCOMA license. Now, this is known as catch all clause. You can catch all control, which means nobody can say only five people will be falling under the net. Entire export community can be covered only by this one paragraph. Are you listening to me? We wanted to know CCR. And here in my left hand, I have 29 notice. I do not know how many people yet to get a notice because DGRAM is watching every exports and then they are validating it and sending it to DG systems and notices are being issued from a level of additional commissioner. Okay, now we are not going to do SCOMET session here. So I'm, not, I'm going to pause this, just a glance with you. What are the policy framework? And this is the licensing authority. There is a major shift that happened. Please take a note. Category zero and category six, these two things pulled out from DGFT. Category zero earlier was DGFT, all nuclear now going to atomic energy, Department of Atomic Energy and the munition list, which is moving to Department of Defense. 
this is the change when you apply for license or any of the material you need to be mindful about it so how to apply all this uh, procedural frameworks are there additional scopes uh, technology and etc etc so this we will skip okay so this is how the new thing has been in, uh, introduced likewise uh, scomet then we have to be mindful about when you claim igst refund okay again when we talk about igst refund basic understanding what is lut what is uh, payment on duty what is inverted duty structure that principle at least that we should be knowing it okay if you have these fundamental principles with you then you can at least reason it out what uh, demands from you what, what is demanded from you is when they file returns and your uh, declaration you know because there is nothing else that you are making mistake because your declarations are shipping bill you filed it correctly but when their return needs to match with your document so there are something which i am sure all of you are familiar with it in case if you are not familiar i'll just uh, walk you through this a few minutes <clears throat> gr waiver is something uh, still confusions are prevailing what will happen after 25000 us dollar whether i need to uh, you can refer this circular very clearly it says you don't need to uh, give gr waiver you are exempted so the 2004 uh, circular uh, i have given you the link and the circular references as well what are the categories are exempted from gr waiver uh, there are eight categories which is oh sorry i'm not showing the screen just a second what are the categories are ex exempted and uh, what are the categories are exempted from this this eight categories and then uh, no need to submit the form up to 25000 dollars igst igst may what you need to important you need to take is that the details what they are entering in table 6a should match the details of invoice and the shipping bills uploaded into ice gate portal that one thing you need to be very clear see delays are happening for xyz reason which i am not going to talk about from our side that what we need to be very careful about it is this and uh, how that uh, steps to be followed eight steps i have given you i will be sharing this uh, thing rfd form what are the cautions that the cb needs to exercise the value of the goods declared in the gst invoice the value in the corresponding shipping bill and the export uh, is to be examined if both are different the lower value will be allotted so that is where a lot of problems are coming because you mentioned the wrong thing or when they file a return if there is a mismatch the lower value has been allotted so they are saying because of you people i end up doing this so and they are putting a demand on the custom brokers that you need to be careful by having certain clauses in the contract if you are entering with them so inverted use duty structure these are all not relevant to you just for academic reason so we can share this slides i think the dushant uh, and the chairman uh, with this we will uh, yeah drawback again i just spoken to you which are the categories that you can uh, take drawback which are the categories you are not supposed to take the drawback and how you can communicate to your uh, customer only in mover 100% eou and when there is an advance license absolutely no drawback except a condition where uh, for example there is a case which we are handling like you know uh, advance license may we have imported and uh, export uh, obligation completed i have imported export obligation completed uh, no drawback claim transaction is over now when i did this uh, manufacturing i used a certain lean principle i made some savings on the inputs there are some more raw materials which are there in my warehouse so i used those warehouse Uh, material and then i uh, did another export because for the advance license i have fulfilled the export obligation that is over whatever the savings on the input which i had that i have used it and i did an export so on which i have claimed drawback on which i have claimed drawback now question is revenue saying no drawback on advance authorization okay now what i am say what we are saying export obligation done that was the condition that has been fulfilled now what is stopping you in giving the drop so it is a gray area which is pending in madras high court 
we will see what is coming in otherwise that is not a yeah these are the small small precaution things that you need to be as a thumb rule while we are doing an export we need to uh, take care of it mm -hmm. all right so i think uh, with this i will stop uh, two hours of session and maybe we'll meet in some different forums uh, on a workshop mode i'll hand it over back to our uh, president yeah Uh, yes, so uh, thank you, Mr. Joshua. It was a very important uh, webinar. Uh, maybe surely uh, Mr. Paresh Chakkar and uh, Mr. Vinay Kaparaj will take up for exports. As far as imports is concerned, uh, it was a good insight. Um, uh, friends have uh, definitely shared their views as regards the uh, the doubts, queries, uh, one is of leaving fine and penalty for post-clearance audit uh, consultative memos. Uh, the next was regarding the classification and uh, exemption notification and also valuation being questioned at the time of assessment or at the time of examination in docs. A uh, crucial aspect, few takeaways from your side regarding getting the master list done, checking of the compliances, uh, applying general rules of interpretation, and uh, most important, importantly, be communicative, do not be submissive as far as the compliances are concerned. So these are the takeaways. We will be surely taking few important notes from you for our members as regards um, the levying of fine and penalty to interpretative disputes, post-clearance audit memos, uh, and particularly when the consignments, what we get to hear from our friends, uh, or from our members also that bill of entries are assessed under faceless thereafter objections are raised by a different department be it chaired be it post clearance audit be it one of the investigative arms but does it mean that as long as the item is correctly classified correctly disc uh, correctly described as per invoice and as per what the item is, will it uh, uh, will it be subjected to any adjudication? And yes, that is being resorted very rampantly across custom stations in the country. So how to deal with that? We'll seek a note from you, maybe as in form of a small PowerPoint that will be helpful to our members to create outreach and. Uh, We'll share it with our members for their future reference and knowledge. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Joshua. So, uh, as regards export side, Parish Bay and Pinak both are here. Maybe your views on it and based on the members' uh, feedback received. Thank you. Thank you, Dushan. Uh, Joshua, sir, uh, it was a nice and uh, eye opener presentation from you, as always it has been. Two questions on export front. One, pertaining to drawback. Now, there has been a lot of confusion within our trade. That it has to be covered under that particular season number. It cannot go in others. So there has been a lot of confusion within our member states where the exporters force them because in others you have Supposing you have a specific drawback accident which covers 1.3%, and in others you have 1.8%. So exporters have been forcing forcing members to specify into 1.8% since they get half a percentage advantage. So that is one of the question. What uh, stand should our member take? Second is on GST front. Uh, whenever there is an import happening under advanced license. So as a 
कस्टम ब्रोकर इट्स आर ड्यूटी टू क्लियर दैट एक्सपोर्ट कंसाइनमेंट अंडर एल यू टी इट कैन नॉट बी कवर्ड अंडर जी एस सी बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ आर मेंबर्स हैव रिसीव मेमोज लॉट ऑफ आवर मेंबर्स हैव फेस इंक्वायरी वेर द एक्सपोर्टर हैज फोर्स द कस्टम ब्रोकर टू फाइल द डॉक्यूमेंट अंडर जी एस टी सी सी एज अ क्रेडिट लोकल एक्सपोर्ट क्रेडिट विच इज देर इन इज अकाउंट टू अवेल दैट क्रेडिट विच इज रॉन्ग देर इज ए मेथड ऑफलाइन मेथड थ्रू विच यू कैन अवेल दैट एक्सपोर्ट क्रेडिट बट you cannot avail the online facility so can you give right. some highlight on this particular two topics sir yeah so so uh, maybe for the benefit of uh, other uh, people also so what we need to understand first on the uh, gst part <coughs> now why do an exporter prefer to work with lut why do an importer prefer to why it is lucrative why it is lucrative for example if there is an itc which is available if there is an itc which is uh, i may not uh, okay all right so if there is a import which i am having 100 rupees as my input value and if i apply 18% so my gst is 18% the itc available on input is 18% whereas if i use that lut my finished product will become higher value than 100 which means let's assume for our discussion it is 200 rupees the export value of the finished goods is 200 on which if i apply 18% that will become 36 rupees so 100 rupees or 18% is 18 rupees as against the finished product is double so which means accumulated credit which i have in my book needs to be liquidated and it will be highly liquidated with the method of lut so i can claim the refund okay whatever the amount that i'm suffering this is concept number 1 there is another concept which is known as inverted duty okay so that inverted duty may how that works is suppose your inputs whatever that you have your inputs is suffering 5% 12% 18% but your output your finished goods is 18% duty now naturally what will happen exporters will have no problem because input is 5% 12% 18% you are paying gst and there is amount your export is 18% there is no problem but if the situation is reversed if input is 18% and your finished goods is 5% 12% 18% that is where the accumulation happens so that accumulation the process which is there is to get a refund for that excess amount so there is a procedure which is there and it is uh, time and again challenged like pharma companies and all they used to face this kind of an accumulated credit on the inverted duty structure part of it now if an exporter is asking you to choose lut method or non uh, cash method now the point is as a custom broker we should not be blindly closing our eyes and say okay sir i will do this okay sir i will do this so you should also rationalize it you should also know what is lut export what is cash payment and if you ask this question back and forth that will give some kind of a clarity for you and then as a broker that you can take a decision so specifically if you have some cases like what parish bhai said we can discuss that matter you can refer that uh, so the community needs to have a very clear uh, understanding about these three types of uh, one is lut one is on payment and getting the thing as a offsetted and getting a refund and the third one is the inverted duty structure this clarity you need to have and also what are the important thing that the broker need to be responsible for and what you are not responsible for so these things that you can put it in your contract that in the event that you don't get your igst credit for the following reason that we will be absolving ourselves that is very important okay so that you should try and do that that is one suggestion which i have okay. coming back to drawback it is a, definitely a, it is not something today problem yesterday's problem whenever there is a section 75 comes in it is a perennial problem always exporter wants if there is a similar serial number they wanted to get the higher percentage now how in import that you exercise judicial control in checking the classification and you are invoking certain principle the same way instead of going blindly 1.4 and 1.8 you ask for the product details you ask for the class uh, application which they have submitted for what the committee has approved how they got the brand rate fixed and that calculation you should be bold enough to ask to understand because merely there is a notification no serial number which says 1.8 which is advantage to us you file it second you can take a declaration from the exporter in writing 
that they would like to opt for the serial number in writing it is not your decision it is not your uh, suggestion and then tomorrow when there is a rejection or anything happens easily you can absolve yourself so that particular okay sir i have no problem you have to communicate in my view this serial number is not correct your will go only on this 1.4 but however upon your instance and you being an export cargo i cannot uh, avoid shut out and i cannot avoid the vessel sailing i am going ahead with this filing at 1.8 at your risk you can take the uh, declaration and you can move ahead sir in this way we can just at least protect our interest thank you sir thank you very much thank you, thank you very much Oh, yeah. 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 you are all team in the event it starts from query management you know this is a suggestion which i'm giving you know i'm not reading your query but still i wanted to add this point which is very valuable to all of you i took a customer i took one year queries what they have got one year queries complete in excel and then i have put in one column saying that is it because of my mistake the query raised is it because a routine query raised by officer routine query i discarded it whatever the query raised because of my poor documentation i rectified with an action plan okay that is one thing you can do so create an sop create a process flow every office should have in the event of first query second query third query which is happening in the faceless once it comes in how do we respond to queries is it the group person will directly give a response without consulting the uh, importer or with the importer's consultation that we will have to give a response how do we respond to the query how we can also tell the pre filing stage to ask certain documents whether there is no query also you should ask for certain documents and keep it ready so that in the event there is a query you can respond to that too number 3 if the officer is reassessing the bill of entry what is the rule thumb rule there are two words that you need to remember one is bona fide another one is malafide the officer when he receives a bill of entry back into his system he will only look into it two aspect is it a bona fide mistake or is it a malafide mistake if it is a bona fide he will reassess and release the goods absolutely no problem if it is a malafide intention if he suspects like what we saw, saw in rule 12 if he has a reason to doubt okay then he will consider this as a malafide intent and he will invoke penal provision okay so these are the two event that we have. in the event he does that what process that we need to involve that needs to be very clear that is do i need to go to commissioner and make a complaint or do i need to accept his term that is where we get panic that is where our mind start stopping you know importer will say my aeo will go i don't want a adjudication at all at any cost and you do not know what to do demerit is the biggest concern for you if it is a big item and these circumstances how do we do it is based on industry specific you draw a sop we can help you validating that sop till you come out this adjudication process then when you come to adjudication process people do not have a clarity on what is fine what is penalty what is confiscation when a ccr is violated what can happen when show cause notice to be issued when we need to take speaking order so whatever i have explained like what mr bushan said we will write a guideline note on that and very clearly in general okay by law we just put this is the process flow and this is the rules and have this as a ready knocker which i will try to give it to you in a week's time and please follow that and you also give some feedback this doesn't work something to be changed we will still uh, discuss and we will do it and have this because pre filing stage whatever if you don't like you know we say if you don't train your child the way that you need to come obviously you will you will see the wrath in the later day you give the discipline what is required in the pre filing stage 50% of the problem will be solved in the post clearance as well as the stage so in that way uh, we have to take this business very seriously and keep one thing in mind it's a knowledge based thing and read that case law which i have referred 
hundred percent without fail today. And uh, this presentation, whatever I've shared, I think two different presentations which I've shared, both will be circulated to all of you. Uh, take the information from that. Some of the slides which I missed out, also you can go through it, and you can write back to the secretariat if you have any further specific queries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Joshua. Uh, uh, thank you, first of all, that the opportunity given to me for giving the vote of thanks. And uh, uh, thank you, Joshua, sir, uh, for accepting the invitation today and coming to the BCB office for this wonderful session. Uh, frankly, this was quite like, as always, it was a quite engaging session and a very inspiring one as well. And uh, also the, the explanation methodology was very convincing with with the long lasting impression is, you know, what exactly I would put it as. Uh, like we have the Philip Kotler as the marketing guru and who has given, uh, you know, the four P's for marketing. You have designed five C's for the custom brokers today. And it was very, uh, you know, quite good. Maybe you explain it. It was quite, uh, really amazing. Uh, and uh, of course, the secret formulas that you have uh, provided to, you know, for custom brokers, all, all those points really make the, uh, you know, the session very inspiring today. Uh, you've already said about the presentation that you will share. So great. And there were a few questions due to paucity of time. We'll compile them and share it across to you. So kindly just uh, you know, provide the answers for that. Uh, thank you, uh, the training committee under the guidance of uh, President Mr. Kiran Rambia. To select the topics as well as you know the framing today's uh, session, uh, it was it was you know really conducted in a great way and uh, the, the great thanks to the technical team and the secretariat for all the arrangements today uh, for having this uh, done and uh, managing members as well as participants here today at uh, in the office and of course the mammoth audience uh, which was glued today uh, we had. 350 plus participants continuously, you know, glued to the screen today here or for this webinar. And a uh, lot of them have given great feedback about this. So thank you once again. And uh, thank you for being such a great audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tejan. All right. Thank you, everyone.